thank you for allowing us into your homes for this 11th episode of Season 3 of Esoteric Science Roundtable. And I want to start uh, by reminding folks that uh, Jeff Contreras from Therefore I Am and us here at, es at Esoteric Science Roundtable do host every third Wednesday of the month uh, metaphysical and philosophical discussion meetings. Uh, very casual, uh, completely free. Just come to Opal Divines. Uh, we meet upstairs starting around 8 o'clock and, and staying till at least 11 at the earliest and then uh, much later in some instances, just depending on how long people want to stay and converse and exchange and hang out. And so, again, <coughs> encourage folks to come out. This will be January 21st, uh, again, next Wednesday if anybody's interested. And uh, we meet around 8 and uh, just bring yourself, basically. That's all you really need and uh, be ready to have uh, some discussion and some exchange. Uh, so keep that in mind, please. And I would like to go ahead and introduce uh, my guest, Ron Anderson. And some folks may have seen Ron on some other uh, access shows. Uh, Common Sense in particular, we've done a few. Common guest Sense, spins. George has uh, let me guest host and host on there a few times. And that's where I first uh, first came uh, became aware of you and uh, just kind of realized that ah, this guy, man, he's I like the way he presents these ideas, and I think he'd be a good uh, person to have on uh, one day to help me kind of get some of these ideas out to the public and get your perspective on some of these things. So well, It's great to be here. Hey, thanks. And if you wouldn't mind, just uh, kind of give a little bit of perspective on how you came into some of these awareness <laughs> issues and what are some of the things that kind of pushed your buttons and kind of, you know, kick-started you along this, this route. I, I would have to say my experience is, I don't know, I, I would say typical of what it is for many people. I was dead asleep uh, up until 9-11. Uh, somebody that came out of getting a degree in biblical studies, learning Hebrew, Greek, all these things, being a minister, jumping from that into atheism, hedonism, and mm. uh, pretty and drastic all of that. change. Though, Very man. drastic. I, you, you know, saw I am all one opposite, of the, <laughs> both ends of the spectrum. There, got he have to taste it all, um, so point, to speak. Yeah. But uh, after 9/11, I guess I started watching some Access TV, seeing some Alex Jones, thinking he's a kook. <laughs> uh, I do. I remember making fun of my wife. Uh, you know, she's like, you know, that stuff's true, Ron. I'm like, God, you're uh, crazy. You're out of mind. Well, it turns out that. For the most part, it is indeed true. Uh, and uh, uh, Alex, I know you'd say it's all documented, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, but anyway, that started sort of the. Uh, I guess it's when whenever you start to look at, you, you pick any part of this what I call the reality matrix we live in, or the sure. current paradigm, whatever your favorite term for it is. The, there's almost no part that you can't look at and begin to understand that there has been deception mm -hmm. and corruption, mm -hmm. whether you look at science, medicine, health, uh, finance, politics, education, all of these areas, uh, th there's something more than what we're being told, or at least that's what I, I began to find. And, um, you know, Corey and I were talking with some folks the other night, and I mentioned this, but I'll say it again. I, I made the mistake, and I hope it's a mistake everyone out there listening tonight will try. Try it as an experiment, even, at least. But uh, I made the mistake of asking, of putting that thought out there to God, to the cosmic consciousness, to the Creator, whatever you want to say, that uh, I want to know more. Uh, not only that, I want to understand, and I want to understand all of it and look out because it, it has been a roller coaster ride of information, of subjects, of learning, esoteric, mm -hmm. <laughs> occult, right. uh, political, just everything. And the information has very much led me. I have not been, even sometimes when I say, I'm going to learn about this subject. Right. Uh, just beginning to learn about that, I will be led into another direction. And it's through just the most innocuous means somebody will hand me a book mm -hmm. I'll watch a show mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I've run into more synchronicities watching your show and Jeff's show and some of those others mm -hmm. uh, access TV is one of the greatest I think uh, uh, vehicles for that and and that's where I, you know I've gotten where I am now and it's just a continual learning process but it's wonderful it's eye-opening mm -hmm. it's it's all inspiring it's I won't want to say frightening sometimes, but it certainly is exhilarating. It exhilarates you, yes. Yeah, it it makes your blood boil sometimes <laughs> too. But, yeah, that's true. That's true. But it it's uh, it's a wonderful journey, and it's led me to realize this is probably one of the most incredible times to be alive and in this form and dimension, uh, maybe more so than at any other time in our history. And, uh, 
thrilled to be here and be a part of it. Amen to that. Yeah, I definitely. And you hear so many people commenting along those lines that the synchronicities are coming into play. People from wide varieties and backgrounds are coming into some real common uh, common ground on a lot of these concepts that they're sharing and exchanging about uh, in spite of, you know, I mean, it just seems like, you know, all these vast pockets around the globe that are uh, on the same page about so many things and we don't really make a real, you know, headstrong effort to constantly find all these groups. They just kind of just appear into our understanding one way or another, the synchronicities and through serendipitous means that we do meet other individuals like-minded that do seem to hold a lot of these same concepts as truth. And I want to touch upon one thing, that truth on this physical plane is certainly relative. Everybody has their idea or ideal of what truth is. But when we start to get to a higher spiritual realm or whatever term you want to use, truth is universal and that is the truth that we're all aspiring towards at some level some more conscious than others in that approach and that journey to find that real kernel of truth that's inside of all of us and so many people are going to have many different perspectives of what is or what is not and to say that our truth is absolute and real and uh you know without any uh flaws potentially that's that's not the case and we just want to establish these ideas that you know, demonstrate the synchronicities that we've been able to share in our own um, dealings with one another and the group uh, exchange and ideals that seem to be common am among a lot of people in this area and also how those tentacles spread out to far vaster areas, you know, all around the globe ultimately because we all have different relations in different areas and so we can uh, make that information, um, when we can share these ideas that we have about this information and when we see that we're on the same page, uh, it gives me certainly a lot of encouragement that we have a lot of potential, a lot of hope with that. It, it does. It's, uh, it, it, it lets you know that you're not just this lone voice out in the wilderness uh, or off in some crazy field of study that has no relevance. As a matter of fact, it's some of the more esoteric and seemingly just far out subject matter that I've studied that has had more real world implications than learning uh, you know, about issues like the Constitution. I mean, it's important, but, you know, political issues and economic issues, as important as they are, uh, don't always address some of the more, uh, uh, what he mentioned, those those kernels of truth, those things that, that are always. And I think also along those lines, it's important to realize that th this is a never-ending process. That's very true, it, yeah. You know, the minute that I, s I stop and think, Okay, I've got it. Right. Yeah. I've got my worldview. I, I know. I, I know about this and this, and I can see how it all works. I, I, I think back to taking a, a class in philosophy, mm -hmm. and it's one of those. If you've never done it, do it just for the fun of this. Is that you can walk into this class, and the professor will one day present you with a, a theory or a model, a philosophical idea of that by the time the class is over and you're walking out and you're going, wow, you know, I really understand this now. And you'll be able to go out and watch people interact and see things happen and, the, and it will just all make so much perfect sense. Mm -hmm. You'll wonder how you never could see it before. Problem is the next day when you go in, mm -hmm. guess what? That nasty old professor is going to completely tear down everything that he just taught you the day before and present you with an entirely new philosophy. Mm -hmm way of looking at things that is totally different than the one before. And if you make the mistake again of just accepting that one and going out, guess what? The next day you're going to get another nasty surprise. And it's, it's just that you can never stop. There's never a point, at least I feel, that you reach where you say, I know it all, I understand it all, I have the perfect understanding of, uh, and world view because there's, other al there's always other information coming that will expand and enlighten uh, your uh, your views, and that is what I live for. That's the thrill and excitement is is having that. It's it's exercise for the mind, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, to borrow uh, Chris Athanas's term, it's expanding your reality. So. Yeah, completely, definitely, I agree, and then yeah, I agreed as well. I want to echo your sentiment that when you feel like you've got the complete, comprehensive picture all laid out, and that you feel like you have every key, and you know you hold uh, you know all the answers. You might want to just take a step back and reassess a bit because right. you're going to get a, a realization that uh, there's more going on. There always is that unfolding, you know, I, I use that term on occasion, unfolding of consciousness. And we always uh, are going to, if we seek, we're going to find more things. We're going to realize there's much more to our existence here and uh, outside of that as well that we have access to that we can tap into. 
And just uh, it interests me to see different levels of awareness and not to say that our awareness is any better necessarily than any other level of awareness, but the varying states of awareness and what people, again, accept as truth and uh, how it causes people to react. Are they going to react in a more in frightened or fearful manner when they see certain information? Because in this day and age, we keep getting bombarded with so much negativity and uh, a lot of stressful uh, things come our way yes. that we have to have to handle. And so, you know, that's going to overwhelm people and they have to deal with that, first of all. And that's something that, uh, you know, you got to deal with that on your plate. Everyone does. Right. And so to try to get past that, uh, step one, to get past all those distractions and to try to see a bit of clarity to the situation. Uh, you know, that's why uh, for those people that feel they have a, this common understanding, they can come together and exchange, exchange on these ideas that they feel that there may be uh, limited numbers in some cases. Um, not that that's always the case, but it's just, uh, it's, it seems like so many people are blind to larger issues. And again, it's kind of relative. Well, again, it, it's, it's a process, just like life, and you can never, there's never a point where you can just stop and assume that, that you have it all. And the adventure of it is uh, constantly being challenged in your thinking. And like, uh, as Corey said, the very key issue to any of it is is approaching it not out of, uh, in, in a fear-based mode, out of love and out of the desire for enlightenment. I know mm -hmm. that is one of the, the, the hallmarks of the show, enlightenment versus enfrightenment. Right, absolutely. Um, but th that's a very key issue because so many people just instantly reject information. Uh, people reject, actually, I think some of the if you want to call them answers to prayers or the miracles of God or the Creator in their mm -hmm. life, people reject them flat out because they're just too weird to fit into their current system of belief mm -hmm. when actually that's exactly the thing that they have been looking for, desiring, wanting, needing. It just doesn't quite fit in. We're so used to filtering out so much of the environment around us and the things, uh, people who, who wonder about other dimensions. Mm -hmm cosmic conscious and all that and, and how can that exist because I can't see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, whatever. And it's like, well, you've got to start checking that out. You've got to open up your ears. Just like if you're in a room and there's conversations going on and you're having a conversation with somebody else, uh, almost always if somebody mentions your name, you will probably pick that out. Mm, that's, that's selective filtering of right. the information you're receiving. And it's it really is just a matter of opening up your consciousness, uh, seeing synchronicities, and I know we're gonna get into that later, so we won't spoil the whole thing. Here, but <laughs> just you know, just let yourself be aware. Let stuff happen, yeah. and if it's weird and freaky, all the better. <laughs> I say. No, I tend to agree with you. And also, people are so used to getting an instant gratification that if something doesn't happen exactly how they're perceiving it to happen, like an answer to a solution, or excuse me, a, an answer to a problem or solution to a problem that may be existing that they have in mind, they want a solution for, and they have in mind what needs to happen, whether it's financial or whatever, or you, you need a car or I uh, need a job, you know, and these things that plague us are relationship issues, things that constantly, you know, are plaguing us, that if we don't get that exact, you know, uh, helping remedy to that issue, then sometimes uh, we get frustrated. But oftentimes, like you're saying, these little hints and innuendos lead us to where we need to be. It's not always going to be laid out in such plain, you know, evident fashion that we see Rarely, so in fact. <laughs> right, it's so rarely. But we get these little hints and these little things that gnaw at us. And when these things gnaw at us repeatedly, then we can start to kind of clue in, or we should clue in. I, I highly advise anybody that has that intuitive gnawing to follow up on it and see, you know, tr follow that string, and it's like going through a maze, you know, F follow, your, you know, take your string and go go through the maze, and um, and and don't uh, be afraid of the to explore the unknown. That's that's what this life journey is, exploring the unknown. And uh, if we can't get excited about potentials, you know, sometimes uh, we get sidetracked and frustrated when we don't have everything we need or we want. But that makes it a challenge and an adventure. You know, if we can look at it like that. I know that's not always easy. But struggles and adversities, you know, make us stronger and they give us a challenge and they give us an opportunity to see and expand and experience things we wouldn't possibly have un, uh, experienced otherwise. So true. And then getting along the, uh, to the idea of, uh, again, group cooperation and uh, the idea in this day and age that there are just so many groups that you can, you know, 
you, you can't uh, even shake a stick at how many different organizations are <laughs> popping up these days. And uh, just Lots. watching, you know, C-SPAN and organizations like that and um, various ways of just touching the med- t- uh, checking the media, being in touch with the media, um, internet, all these different means of communication that we have, of exchanging globally these days, we see groups propping, uh, cropping up and having their different ideals, their little pet projects that they want to bring forward, and they find and they seek uh, like-minded individuals. <laughs> and we have the capacity these days to do it globally, as opposed to just find somebody that might, you know, oh, I'm looking for other Beatle fans in my city or something like that. You know, this day and age, you can really reach out and you can really have so much at your disposal that is, uh, these are the kinds of things that are going to lead us to this group exchange, I feel more so, these different, again, global exchanges, they're embryonic in the sense that they're small groups starting in most cases and meeting about different issues, but then that can build into a larger expression and a larger exchange, and that is definitely uh, my hope for what we have uh, in store for the future. I think so. I, uh, You know, since I've gotten involved mm-hmm however you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, whether it's been going to uh, the uh, peace rallies um, or going to various, uh, some of the political events that have gone on and seeing the numerous groups represented, one of the first things I, I started to notice was how much everyone has really in common mm-hmm. with each other as far as overall goals, overall uh, 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 ideals or whatever. Mm-hmm. But everyone's sort of hammering away at their own little little piece of it, mm-hmm. and um, but I, I I believe that that is even starting to break down, and that the the common ground right. uh, on the larger level and the larger scale is really starting to come through, and people are sort of waking up to the fact that you know we're all related in this somehow, and we we all have a, a very vested interest in the well-being of uh, of one another, not only here in our uh, city, county, state, nation, but, you know, world, universe, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and that's one of the great things about this global aspect of the communications now is that you can plug in to a large number of people and share the ideas and the, uh, the, the thinking and the energy mm-hmm. that's being put out there. Um, and it's, uh, it reminds me of the sort of like that bad Keanu Reeves movie, Johnny Mnemonic, you know, it's like mm. plugging in your little implant and oh, just, yeah. and, but getting this big hit of what's going on, you know, uh-huh. the, the, the overall consciousness. You know, it's interesting in a couple of areas, we talked about some different areas of endeavor earlier, but I would say um, <clears throat> politically, it's really interesting to me when I see how much the so-called left and the so-called right are just coming together more and more on the issues, the straight up real deal issues, you know, everybody needs like clean water to drink, uh, people want to have access to good, healthy food, you know, nice homes, clean, you know, clean living, things like that, uh, education, things of that nature that will uh, do what it needs to do to help us, to, to nurture us so that we can be a, 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 a more expansive society overall, that we, you know, that we can grow and benefit from all areas of human endeavor. But the political, I really feel, is it always, you know, our governmental is the head. It's what governs and rules and controls us. And so as the political paradigms change, so too a lot of times other institutions will follow suit because of that. And when people are coming together on political terms, that's in a lot of time, a lot of times is more difficult than coming together on a religious common ground because people, you know, I mean, it's like people that are fiercely into one sports team or another, you know, it's like they (laughs) refuse to come together. They hate the opposing team so badly that they right. oftentimes just get lost in that. And when you see people coming together with the political in the political realm more so, and the lines seem to really be graying, that to me is giving me a lot of faith and confidence that things are on a verge of an expansion of consciousness that we can take advantage of. Well, I, one of the interesting things about that is that, um, let's say in the past, or at least up to now, uh, and we'll speak maybe just about here in the United States because that's all our shared and common experience. But uh, the let's say the political process has has been set up almost to use your, the, the sports metaphor as opposing forces: my side, your side, who's going to win, 
um, which creates a competitiveness. Oh, yeah, which I mean, we, you know, as as human beings, we're very competitive creatures. We like right. to be on the winning team. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I'm not sure that those are very useful uh, ways of dealing with things of such importance. But mm -hmm. I, I wonder, and we'll throw the question out and, and see where it goes. But mm -hmm. what would be, what would you see as? A, or assuming that our current political system is pretty much an abject failure, just as, <laughs> as, as far as representing liberty and freedom and, 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 uh, and the overall uh, good mm -hmm. of the people of this nation and the world, um, you know, if that's not working, what would be, since the show's ideals, the ideal that we could replace it with, or at least something to start with? Well, I think just like all uh, individual people, countries also have individual qualities and cultures and perspectives that uh, to, try to, to, pro to try to attempt to put everything under one umbrella is going to fail miserably. So we have to be respectful of each individual culture and each individual nation and what they perceive as rule of law, what they perceive as, you know, the, the true ideals that they want to govern themselves upon. And so we have to be respectful and exchange globally from that firm foundation. Um, I would say here in this country, I think we have a wonderful document in place, but through executive orders and various schemings and various leeching bodies that have, you know, caused it to... Politicians. <laughs> well, and, you know, like the Fed, for instance, how yeah. that is, uh, and all the taxation that takes place right. left and right, that we're not able to either have a living wage, so-called, or get our heads above debt oftentimes to be able to enjoy the simplest pleasures of life that we all should have opportunity to do, uh, these, these sidetracking things that prevent us from doing that. So I think we have in place a really wonderful document, the Constitution, and uh, the idea of a republic uh, to me is still a, a great concept that allows for people to agree upon those key concepts for their nation that they can build upon. Uh, it's just that we have to... Um, somehow you know kick these leeches off that's the whole problem the body <laughs> politic is 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 unhealthy because of all the things that are you know sucking at it and, and taking from its you know like so we have tape a tapeworm or something you know uh, taking the nourishment out of our stomachs big fat ticks exactly so yeah. we got to kick off the ticks before we can make any real progress and i guess identifying what the tick like you know action is how are we being sucked dry in various by you know, the various means to suck us dry and uh, prevent us from coming together uh, because again if we had economic stability and freedom for individuals in this country more so then we wouldn't have a problem with the illegal thing that would be a non-issue we wouldn't be looking at the color things like oh this guy's this and this right. guy's that if everybody is making a good living regardless of skin color and regardless of their creed uh, we could truly come together, and that also is a key component. You know, the governmental, but the finance, and you know, they're married in intimately together. But uh, getting getting the finance together, getting the governmental in order, I think everything else would follow suit. Because if people had the means to sustain themselves, they could be happy, useful, productive people, and they could have artistic endeavors. They could have free time. They could do a lot of wonderful things. All the things that they hope and dream of doing that, you know, they can't get under the daily grind in order to really really adequately pursue. I find it real interesting in that regard that um, what a lot of people take their, you see all these bumper stickers, power of pride, and it's got the flag, and right, you know, yeah. everybody loves America. I, you know, I love what America represents, I do, right. um, on paper, so to speak. But uh, if, if people actually stopped for a second to, to look at the amount of their personal time that is just eaten up with feeding the beast, so to speak. Mm -hmm. you know, as you said, whether it's through excessive taxation, uh, that uh, if you include federal, state, and local taxes, uh, at, at the last figuring I heard, the average American is working five to six months a year to pay taxes alone. Yeah. That's astounding. That's astounding, okay? Um, uh, it, you throw into that also the, God, all of the <clears throat> just crazy laws that are passed 
against us, against the liberty that we're supposed to have been endowed by the Creator and guaranteed by the Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, usually for the benefit of, uh, of an elite or of a, a small number who are, you know, generally just trying to enrich themselves like ticks on, on our labor. Mm -hmm. uh, my point all this being that if a, for me to stop and look at uh, the way I was living my life before, mm -hmm. uh, working for a corporation, um, paying my taxes, doing all of the things that you're supposed to do, but really having no time mm, right. to, to do anything. You know, by the time you get home from your job and your drive and your this and all that, uh, from figuring out your taxes and dealing and making sure you're in compliance with all of the laws. Right, exactly. Um, I, I'll be honest, man. Most people, the, about all the energy they've got left, if you were like me, was to sit down in front of a TV, maybe rent a movie, uh, if you had the energy to get to the video store. And it, it's about the most subtle form of slavery, I think, that I can imagine, because so much of our effort and our energy, our, our mental and physical, is put forth to serve someone else yeah. and interests that are completely other than our own. And it's in that respect, I think, that uh, is part of what is bringing together the, the left and the right, the Republicans or Democrats, the, the Greens, Libertarians, um, because people are starting to realize that there are just some core issues that have to do with, uh, with just our being able to exist yeah, uh, very freely. Very fundamental stuff. <laughs> very, very fundamental. Clean water, clean air, mm -hmm. um, not being... Uh, you know, I saw a billboard the other day that uh, was for a bank or somebody like that, and it said, freedom, the power of choice. And I think, unfortunately, for a lot of people in the United States, their idea of freedom is Coke versus Pepsi or McDonald's versus Wendy's. The, you know, because they said, well, if you lived in Saudi Arabia, you, you wouldn't be able... Well, you know, I, I don't know how useful comparing those kind of things is, but the freedom is not about choosing, especially when it's just two different brands of poison that you're choosing from. Uh, you know, we get into the health issues. Well, that's a whole other subject, but uh, that, that has nothing to do with freedom. Freedom has everything to do with responsibility uh, and the ability for individuals to, uh, I think in, uh, the current issue of Duality magazine, I don't think we have a copy of that here, but Michael Badnarik of the Libertarian Party uh, has a good article in there about, uh, you know, about how liberty, about freedom derives from property and your rights, whether the property is your body or your home or your car, uh, your right to do with it as you will as long as you don't infringe on the rights of others. Mm -hmm. uh, we're so far from that this day. I personally, though, am not sure, I, you know, I think the Constitution, in many ways, is truly a brilliant document um, and a, 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 an excellent model for government. The, the thing that gives me pause mm -hmm. is the fact that we had to write a Constitution at all. Implicit in that is that governments tend to turn corrupt. Mm -hmm. And I wonder where the, short of total anarchy, mm -hmm. you know, short of, unlike my past of going from one extreme to the other, but mm -hmm. it's good to, I'm a Libra, it's good to try to find some balance in between. <laughs> um, what, what is, you know, we have a constitution, but it had a couple of, of, of caveats written into it that allowed the rascals to, to take over and, you know, things like, uh, Article 1, Section 8, and the 14th Amendment. Please feel free to go research those. those you know, if, if that is something you're led to check out, go check it out. Understand how we got kind of got to where we are today. But, uh, you know, is, are, are we talking about just shaking off the current batch of ticks that are on us? Mm -hmm. Are we going to get another one in 100 or 150 or 200 years? I don't, I, I personally, and just throwing that out there, I don't know what form of government would be an ideal form of government, one mm -hmm. that could be held up completely as, uh, as a model and as a, uh, as a true, just, and fair 
uh, and hopefully incorruptible. Oh, we're so far removed from that. And I think really, that's, <laughs> like you say, you know, give people give more time, and there'll be more ticks that'll jump on before it's all said and done. Right. Certainly, but uh, as far as our rule of law, they all the founding fathers. That's why you know in their writings, if you read the personal writings, why they you know said, hey, this is the best we've got for the time being. We're, we're, we need law. We need rule of law on this planet. Certainly, I think most would agree. It's just what what form is it going to take. I think they gave us the best they could offer at the time, and it's still, uh, you know, a pretty good working model for the most part. And getting back to the idea of work and slavery, um, the idea of time is money. That's what we're really bound to. Yeah. Uh, the idea of uh, time being creativity, that's what we need to really sway our efforts towards. And uh, people that are supporting the Mayan calendar are really trying to get people to think about their time in a really fundamentally different way so that, again, time can be thought of in terms of creativity. And when we use our time responsibly, we can be creative in that responsible manner and not just using time just to be a slave to the grind and just bound to the machine and just giving all of our efforts and energies over to creating something that's ultimately never really going to give us any fulfillment in our lives. We may get the, the cash benefits of the job and be able to su sustain our lives, but we're not getting any real fulfillment out of expressing something that uh, might really be, uh, you know, something inside of us that we really want to offer up. And that's, uh, uh, and it's something, a, a vital part of us that we uh, suppress by staying, you know, bound in this work system a lot of times. Well, and because we're in that system, uh, system we currently live in, we're not even allowed the time, and in fact, encouraged not to think about those things, really. Uh, if, you, if you plug into, uh, please don't change your channel now, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, you, 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 you surf the channels of uh, cable or satellite or whatever, I guess you're watching cable right now, of course, but um, it, it, talk about just total distraction 24-7, man, it's there. You want you got home and garden TV, you got the golf channel, you got <laughs> what and, any and niche, times three, right? Any niche, it, it's thing. all there. Anything to keep you from uh, doing something as simple, maybe as just and uh, I encourage you to do this one at nine o'clock is just turn the TV <laughs> off for a little while, enjoy some silence, right? Or family time, or family something time, a bit do more some fulfilling. reading, anything uh, agree, yeah, other sure. than letting somebody else program you that's what television programming is mm -hmm. it's programming uh, but and it's not just television but it's movies look at the entire industry that is that we have created around sports figures movie stars television stars singers etc the right. magazines and they become the ideals that were you know told to look up to and exactly. seek that as a role model in a lot of cases and that's uh, unfortunately you know really not always the best uh, role model for our young children and uh, definitely another diversionary uh, tactic I mean some in some cases you know the reality shows they get you involved and you're actually uh, involved but you're you're still playing within a role you're still catering or pandering to somebody else's perception you know you're not you're still using that energy to do somebody else's idea of creativity even if you enjoy being a singer and you go for the American Idol thing you know there are other means to get your voice heard than to you know pimp yourself out on this na this ta this uh, nation uh, nationwide or, or set yourself thing. up for ridicule, which is really what that show is all about. Whoa, well, 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 that's interesting. Things are yeah. falling off the wall here in the studio. <laughs> 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 They're soft things, so it's probably okay. Um, yeah, uh, what well, you know, uh, along that line, if mm -hmm. if you're musically inclined, good God, come up here to Access TV. Uh, costs a little bit of money and a little bit of time to take the courses. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a show. Yeah, that's uh, true. I've seen people do that, present you know, their music out there, on there's the a, air. There's a lot of it. Uh, that creative aspect, I think, is very important because it's uh, when we stifle our creativity. Right. When the only creativity that we're ever able to appreciate is that which others have created for us and present to us, mm -hmm. it's sort of... Uh, like fluoride in the water, it, it sort of stifles the mind a little bit and it, and it dulls the senses. And it's very unfulfilling, you know, I mean, at the yeah. soul level, that's just not fulfilling. And it's, that's why we yearn and desire always for a better situation, better places, better, you know, just better situation in general to uh, a lot of times work environment, relationships, what have you, you know, we just get caught up in that and uh, things just aren't quite right. And we're, we're not living up to something that uh, would really, truly satisfy us, you know, and that's... Um, 
encourage people to consider those things. Look to yourself. Again, man, know thyself. That's the old Greek axiom. You know, why is it that we uh, are asked to look at ourselves, you know, to quiet yourself, still yourself, and to consider things about how you feel, why you feel that way, why you think a certain way, and uh, how things affect you during the day, any given day. When you gauge yourself like that, you can build into yourself a stronger character, more patience, a more allowing attitude, and uh, you can ex you can uh, exchange energy more effortlessly, and you can uh, conserve your energy. You won't be expending energy running around like a chicken with its head cut off. You know, the more your understanding of certain concepts and how energy flows, you know, how thought uh, changes energy and directs energy, and vice versa, and how um, how we we play into that. You know, our minds and our thinking is the basis for our existence, and as we choose to think things crop up around those thoughts and that's why it's we have to guard true. our thinking you know at all times and try to if we so choose you know have productive creative thinking you know that will not only uplift and benefit our, ourselves but others around us as well you know the, the better that we're all doing collectively the happier we can all exist and the the more beneficial all things can be for all people you know it's just again getting an idea or an ideal in mind of you know visualizing what we think is the best scenario for any area whether that be again the political educational religious what have you coming together under an ideal of mutual respect you know respecting each other's ideas and exchanging hopefully you know some good exchange <coughs> will take place as a result and i think uh, regarding the energy, what Corey was saying about what you put out there it tends to be what people call it karma, whatever you want to say, power, positive thinking, prayer, however you label it, uh, it, it is a, an observable fact of, of our existence. Part of the, uh, I don't say the, the necessity of continuing to educate yourself and continuing continuing to expand your consciousness is to in some ways gain appreciation for aspects that you perhaps just have not been aware of. Um, one of the things that began to happen uh, for, for my wife and I as we you know moved into this or were moved through it uh, and are moved through it is uh, not only gaining an understanding of the importance of having a respect and, and, and the, the meeting of minds and consciousness with others, fellow human beings, right, right. Um, but uh, very quickly also we were led to understand that this also involves really the entire planet, not just the environment as important as, as clean water and, and clean air unpolluted with PCBs and whatever other kind of noxious poisons are out there, uh, but all the way down to uh, things as, as simple as, as the animals, whether it's the, the, the four wonderful dogs that we have, whether it is um, just beginning to have an appreciation for the fact that all life on this planet, in this existence, and I would say also in others, uh, whether it's ETs or higher or lower dimensional beings, but we all share the same... Uh, Essence, maybe? Essence, yeah. We're, we're all the same energy. If you, anybody was watching Chris's show last night and the, that little video he showed, The Powers of Ten, which I haven't seen in such a long time, it was great to see that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we are all of the same thing. And um, for the longest time, just personally, I never really realized that the way that I treat the environment, I used to be a habitual... Uh, well, I am a habitual smoker, <laughs> but I used to habitually flick my butts out the window, and I just started kind of had to start thinking, man, is that really what you want to do? You know, h how does that affect? Um, and then began to look at uh, at nature and at the at my own attitudes towards animals, towards the things that I eat, um, what I choose to put in my body, which has led. Uh, me it's to make different decisions but I guess what I'm trying to say is that we often when we're talking about coming together for the good of all we're, we're very uh, we're being very race bias in that and saying the good of all humans and I think that part of the ideal for the future mm -hmm. for 
for what's to come if we hope to to somehow transcend beyond barbarism, beyond violence, beyond greed, and those kinds of things is to begin to embrace all of the creation, all of nature, all of the uh, ecology, all of the animal kingdom. Uh, one of those great quotes, and now I forget who said it, but um, it's probably several people that have said there, there will come a time when we look back on the way uh, that we treat animals now the same way that we look back on the way that we uh, thought of murdering other human beings. Uh, and, and it would be one of shame, just given the, the sheer... I definitely tend to agree the, with that the, as well. The ecological horror that, that, that we have... Uh, so again, uh, that seems sort of out from left field, but it's one of those things that it, you, you can't begin to appreciate all that is involved in in, in creating this new world order, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, because yet there is going to be a new world order. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, that's, it, it's, it, there's going to be one. It's really sort of our choice right, sure. what that new world order is. And, completely. and what we are creating and how we are treating everything about it now will very much shape what that may become in the future. Yeah, I agree. I think the respect for life in a holistic fashion is very important. And also just having an open, allowing attitude is really going to help us along. But let's go ahead and grab a few calls. We've got yeah. some lined up and see what's going on with the folks this evening. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hello, caller, I'm not hearing you. Hello. Hey, uh, Chris, could I get the TV turned up in here maybe? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, caller. Hello. Yeah, just hang hang on the line for a second, hang on. please, if you don't mind. And, uh, do you mind turning up the television? That might help out in here. Good afternoon, dog. Hello. You can hear him in the control Hello. room. But right. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You there, caller? Hello. Caller, are you there still? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Got you go now. ahead. Yeah, we're working on it now. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Hey, man, something's got to die so others may live, man. Hey, you're preaching the same stuff from the 60s, man. You sound like some long-haired hippie professor, dude, coming down on a hit of acid, man. LSD, man. Something's got to die so others may live. Don't you know what's happening in the world today? There is people out there trying to kill us for who we are, dude. You know, it says in the Bible, man, kill them before they kill you, man. I Golly, man, that, the buddy. whole world's about religion, man. I'm saying I'm a survivalist. Let's kill them before they kill us. They kill who? Blow the whole what? world up, man. If Hey, you know what? If we blow the whole world up, then we ain't got to worry about them no more. Hey, okay. kill, buddy. That's what it's all about. Let's go stop them, man. You're, glad, you're lucky I ain't the president, man. Dude, there would be only half a world left. There would be no world left. I'd blow it up. Huh. Why not? Let's eat some acid and go kill everybody and then blow it up. I live to it by a bunch of freaks, dude. They're, they're all church people, man. And they beat this kid, just beat him nearly to death, and they all live around me. Hmm. I am totally blown away. They, they're moving right behind me, the main one. Huh. And I went over there the other day to tell them to turn their generator down because it was just blasting me out. I was a nice guy about it. And they're over there with their white shirts and ties and their short haircuts. I mean, I got short hair, too, but I've had long hair. I mean, what's the deal about that? But anyway, man, hey, I Jeff, have this you're, you're rambling on us here. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like I've given you several minutes, and you're not really making a solid point. And if you just want to kill everybody, you know, you're going to bring that similar energy back to yourself. Um, and you're probably not going to be able to really fully um, perceive of the fact that you're doing that because of that kill, kill, kill mentality is such a limited tunnel vision kind of thinking in my estimation that you're just going to, until you can kind of be a little bit more allowing uh, other cultures, other people, and kind of consider those other cultures and other things as an extension of yourself. And I don't really care if I'm sounding like a peace, love, hippie type person. That's not really my background. But uh, I understand the uh, benefits of working together and coming together on common ground and helping as opposed Absolutely. to opposing one another. Aside from the kill, kill, kill is a very self-centered because, of course, when you say that, I assume you want to be the one doing the killing, not the one getting killed. Mm. So think about that maybe, uh, you know, 
if you don't end up as president? <laughs> well, <laughs> vote scam, man. Sometimes hey, like, you, you could be. You could be. <laughs> Just get to know Dana DeBouvard real well. Maybe you could be. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hello? Yeah, how's it going? I can barely hear you all. Uh, uh, listen to, through your TV. Okay, well, um, I have a question. Um, uh, it might be a little off the subject, but what do y'all know about Kundalini or anyone who's ever tried to experience Kundalini? I mean, does it work? Is it really complicated? Do you have to be really adept at yoga? What is, what's the deal with that? Okay, I'll go ahead and answer you off the air. Uh, the term Kundalini, there's a lot of different uh, interpretations of that term, but generally it's... Uh, Kind of, if you want to visualize it, imagine a serpent coiled up at the base of your spine that represents potential energy, and as it springs up, like a cobra striking, that it goes to these centers of your spine and allows you to have, you know, different awarenesses, different expansions of consciousness, and the means by which you can awaken that energy are going to vary. There's a specific Kundalini yoga that some people use that. Um, violently opening the centers or, or uh, trying to work on the centers, you can lead to uh, l real problems because if, if you don't have a balance existing in your body already between your emotions, your thinking, and your physical body, you're going to have uh, difficulty. You're going to activate centers and it's going to cause a real instability or a real imbalance in your body. So the best way to... Uh, activate kundalini in all honesty is selfless service to humanity when you act out of allowing and love and do things for others uh, without thinking about yourself on an on an everyday basis and that becomes your complete mode of expression and thinking and that is when kundalini will have expressed itself uh, in the the most you know proper fashion that you can hope to achieve uh, there are again other millions of means but uh, just having a loving open heart will allow you to move that energy in a safe fashion and you'll get the benefits from that more so than trying to specifically work on certain centers to try to activate them. You know, that can lead to trouble. Thanks for the call though. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Hello, caller. Okay, I don't hear a caller, so uh hello caller, you're on the air. Yeah, hello? Yes. Well, Corey. Yes. And and Ron Anderson? That's right. How are y'all? Wonderful. Uh, hey, hey, are y'all in Greece right now? <laughs> no, but if you use your visualization skills, we can be there. Uh, we we are in a way, uh, you know, as far as energy and time and and distance really have no meaning, and it's all relative. The other dimensions, but really, we're right here in Austin, Texas. Sometimes I feel a little greasy on occasion. <laughs> in all honesty, I took a shower before again. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty I recognize good. How are you? this caller. Who is this caller? Uh, this is Neil and Bob. Okay, I thought it was someone Neil else. Never mind. Bob, okay. Go ahead. Uh, you can Neil and Bob on deep. <laughs> I was say, is that your favorite pastime? Or <laughs> okay, hey, thanks for taking the time to view their caller. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Um, I can't hear you. Are you? Are you there? Are you listening through your television or the phone? Listen through your television. Turn up I'm your television. Hurting. Hello? Yes, are you hearing us? Turn up your television. Caller, turn up your television volume. Turn up your TV volume. Okay, are you there? You hearing us now? We hear you fine. Okay, um, yes, I, I, I was going to ask you, um, the statesman or nobody's reporting on this, but uh, Pat Robertson said that the Lord told him that uh, George Bush would uh, win an election. He had favor with God, but he said the same thing about his dad and Clinton beat him. This is also, he used to have like a race car and a blimp and he had the family network and he sold it, but no one's reporting on this. I'm sure you can dig up the tape. He said the Lord had told him that uh, George Bush Sr. was going to be Clinton, but then Clinton beat him, and he's saying the same thing what do you again. Think? What it's do you just think about weird, this? almost eerie, and, and I've not seen anybody reporting this. I know they've got tapes about it. And um, I was curious what your opinion is about that. Well, what do you think about it, real quick? Caller, what, what do you think about it? Are you hearing us? Okay, I'll let you go. Um, what I would say is that um, every, different people believe different things, and uh, whether you take Pat Robertson as a mouthpiece or somebody that's really reliable when uh, the Lord speaks to him, um, I would leave that to your personal discretion as to what you feel is true and what's not true. Um, 
I think at this point, my intuitive feeling is that the leading indicators are that Bush will be reelected at this point in time. Uh, everything that I am feeling is leading towards that being the case. Um, as far as why it's not being reported, because Pat Robertson doesn't always get a lot of press mainstream one way or the other. You know, people kind of have. I, I don't think that the <laughs> that the Republican Party needs Pat Robertson and the Christian right. But they've got uh, Robert Reed already. They, uh, yeah, they've got so that the, Reed guy. They they, they don't really Reed. need that whole movement as they did during the the, the, the grand glory days of the uh, Reagan and um, and Bush. Well, it's been tremendous in helping year. them achieve a lot of uh, financial. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Gains with this, yeah. uh, you know, they got a large cash right now set up so far. So I would, mm -hmm. I would kind of disagree with you. I think that the Christian uh, coalition aspect, whatever name it's going under these days, <laughs> is uh, beneficial to their ends with the Bush thing. It so. is. And just for your information, if you want to check out some really good, some interesting, documented information about Pat Robertson and his uh, operations. There is a website, uh, gregpalast.com, and uh, his uh, latest book, uh, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, devotes an entire chapter to Pat Robertson. Uh, some very interesting revelations, and uh, will certainly make for interesting reading, but like I so said, you can check it out online at gregpalast.com. It doesn't cost a dime. Right on. Sounds like some good information. Okay, hello, caller, you're on the air. Hello. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a better accent than that, man. Come know, on. That's a nice try, but <laughs> come on, buddy. You got to sell it if you want to get on the air, man. That wasn't doing the trick. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hey, guys. I was just uh, going to say, if, uh, first time caller, but long time watcher. I like you guys a lot. Appreciate it. And uh, I was wondering, which one of you guys do they call the Space Cowboy? I think it's the fruitcake on the right. <laughs> space Cowboy. Some call me the gangster of love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching the show this evening. Have a lovely Appreciate evening. Appreciate it. <laughs> a little caller on the air. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good, good. yourself? Oh, pretty good. Uh, I bet. How long have y'all been on? About since 9 o'clock tonight? 8 o'clock this evening. Oh, really? How long do y'all go? Till 9. Okay, good deal. Well, I made it just in time then. Uh, I was listening to y'all talking earlier about, um, well, I mean, basically, I guess I just have one question. Sure. If, if, you, if you were uh, a hot dog... <laughs> I think you've called him. I'd want to be an before. Oscar Mayer wiener. I don't know. Is that the answer? <laughs> UT's back in session. <laughs> hello, caller. You're on the air. Hello. Yes. Hello. How are you? Hi. Yes. Um, I like yoga a lot, and I was. Um, I've been doing. I'm sorry. It's weird with the TV. I've been doing Kundalini yoga, and I was kind of concerned about your comment earlier about. Well, please elaborate from your own experience. Well, I really loved it. It's. It's kind of like... Do you do it often, or how often do you um, I don't it? do it often. I should do it more often. See, My, if you were to do it often, then you would see benefits, or uh, maybe not necessarily benefits, that would be from doing it you know, more often. No, absolutely. Even after a couple of times, there are huge benefits. Well, I'm benefits. sure you're going to notice things, but you know, just like weightlifting, if you don't do it, or exercise, if you don't do it frequently, or diet, you don't do it frequently, you're not going to get those ultimate results. But I would caution you about concentrating specifically on the centers because you know the lower centers in particular that is the sex appetites that's our desire nature and those things if our desire in our mind uh, you know if we desire uh, you know if, if we're just not really a balanced person and we're into a lot of negative things then those channels are gonna open up and we're gonna allow energy exchange and not only that whether you choose to believe it or not there are entities little entities that hang out that we really can't see very readily in this day and age but are becoming more apparent to us that can hang on. It's just like uh, with an alcoholic. Uh, there are certain energies that gather, little intelligences that gather around that person because they feed off that energy. And so we have to caution ourselves as to what we invite into our living experience. Uh, and uh, because these things will cling to us, you know what I mean? They'll cling to us and they'll cause us uh, serious concern in some cases, and they could cause disruption, worst case, leading to insanity. So Very would worst you case. recommend I discontinue it? Uh, just be, you exercise with caution. Exercise with caution, and keep, if you are a focused, balanced person, then this type of yoga is not going to give you difficulty. If you, you know, are relatively emotionally stable, your thinking is not overly analytical, and you have a relative balance between those two, you know, faculties of yourself, then you can proceed with this yoga without a lot of concern. And you no, seem, I think I'd be a horrible candidate. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, well then, you know, there are other types of yoga. The uh, one that's maybe uh, consider you might consider researching, Bhakti, B-H-A-K-T-I, which is a devotional yoga 
uh, based on the heart, and uh, it's a, more of an introductory style yoga that would allow some of the same benefits that uh, you would receive through a kundalini yoga. And it's not so much posturing, it's more meditation, but nonetheless it would uh, maybe allow some introspection into what you're hoping to achieve. Thank you. That sounds very interesting. Actually, um, I was also very interested by your energy comments. Could you expand upon, I, we've never caught your show before. Uh, mm -hmm. my Sorry, the interview comments. I'm not really sure what which, what you were. Uh, oh, we energy. lost our energy comments. Energy comments. She said. I guess about uh, if if you were referring to about energy. Gosh, I don't know. Is it energy put out or that we're all energy? Well, yeah, because we have energy going through, and uh, you know, we just, we are inter electromagnetic beings. We can move energy through us with our thoughts. So if we uh, set our energy in the lower, like the sex nature, and we're obsessed with sex, that energy stays there, and that's where we get prostate cancer. That's why there's so much prostate cancer because we don't have release of the sexual nature in, in this day and age in this society, and uh, we don't have healthy sexual release for the most part, and so that's where prostate cancer comes in, uh, ovarian cancer comes in with, in with individuals, and the energies as far as extra energies of intelligences, there are all kinds of grades of intelligences. Uh, you certainly were aware of the plant kingdom, mineral kingdom, our human intelligence, but there are lesser lives and there are the angelic hosts, angelic kingdoms, whether you choose to believe that or not, but there are these lesser lives that are building. They're little creatures that help build. They help make the flower smell pretty. They help uh, build, hmm, uh, they're just, they help in nature building and they, they cling to us because we have energy and we have will and so they want to be close to us. <laughs> and so if they have, if we have traits, certain ones are going to be negative more so, and some are going to be more positive. And the negative ones are going to gravitate towards negative humans, positive towards positive humans. <clears throat> and so uh, it just uh, pans out that way that we draw to us, it's the law of attraction, like attracts like, and we draw to us uh, what we are putting out ourselves. If you want to kill everybody, you know, I don't know, you might be putting some killing energy coming your way, so be cautious. Yeah, you true. never, never know. Every Everything is energy and vibration. Right. It's two very core things, energy and vibration, and because energy never dies, it only changes form or vibration. Right. Uh, that is sort of that connectedness that we're talking about, whether it's thought energy that you put out that mm -hmm. comes back, whether it's the connection that Corey and I have to you and to right. everything else all this big soup, this big ocean of energy, mm -hmm. vibrating, giving form to different things. Sure, and we can tap into it. Don't forget the philosophical, metaphysical meaning, Opal Divines, uh, third Wednesday. It's, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, this is going to be January 21st, this upcoming month, or this month, rather. And uh, we are here every Friday uh, mm -hmm. on Channel 10 at 8 p.m., If like for the viewer that was watching earlier. And we all our calls got lost simultaneously when that brrr no, noise happened. We Weird. lost the calls. a little odd. It's never happened before, but... Uh, um, I want to just remind folks, uh, you know, about the show, and thanks, Ron, for coming on as a guest. Really appreciate it. Great, I appreciate being here. And thanks uh, to my producer, Chris, for commanding the helm of the Starship Esoterica. Uh, I want to uh, remind folks about Therefore I Am with Jeff Gutierrez every Tuesday at ten on Channel 16, and Good Reality show. Expander with Chris Athanas, and that's on every Thursday, uh, 10 p.m. Channel 16. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for taking the opportunity to uh, view the show. Uh, please try to stay safe and dry out there and stay cozy in your homes. Uh, again, thanks, Ron, for taking the time to share and exchange here. Um, and hopefully this rapport that we're speaking about can be a bit more expansive and contagious. You know, it's up to us. Oh, and it's a little early. Right on. Cool, man.